Hey guys, we're in British Columbia near Maple Ridge and thankfully not flooded. We've had a lot of rain lately, but doing pretty well. And we're looking at a bike today called the Magnum Scout. Now I have looked at another model from them called the Nomad and it was kind of a mid-step frame, had an adjustable angle stem and the tire tread was a little bit tighter. And it kind of makes sense. The Scout, that one kind of goes ahead and scouts out the terrain. It's a little bit more rugged. This high step frame is going to be stiffer. This is a non-adjustable stem, so it's not going to rattle loose and stuff, but you're also not going to get that adjustability, kind of that, that upright body position if, if you wanted it. The geometry is actually very similar. Both of these bikes only come in one frame size, but the tires on this one are a little bit nicer. These are Kenda. You can see that the treads are a little bit like bigger and there's more space between them so they can really grab and take you across all kinds of different terrain. This bike, being a fat tire bike, these are 26 by four inches, it could actually perform on like dry sand or loamy marshy terrain or even some packed snow. The key would be to lower the tire pressure. So this is rated from five to 30 PSI. I love that these tires have the reflective sidewall stripes. We've got integrated lights on this front and rear. I'm gonna talk about those more in a minute. Um, but otherwise, I mean, this is a pretty pretty cool bike because the price point is really good. It's $25.99. By comparison, the Nomad was like $23.49. And really, you're kind of getting the same thing aside from, you know, the different tires. These ones are a little bit nicer, the stem, and just the, the frame style. This one's actually a little bit lighter. 73 and a half pounds, kind of depends on which battery option you get. Only $100 difference to go from the standard 17.5 to the 19.2 amp hour battery. I think that is so cool. So both of these bikes, they kind of have interchangeable batteries. You could get kind of a his and hers or, you know, one for more like commuting and then this one for adventuring. Again, the, the high step frame is gonna be a little bit stiffer. I was taking the battery off to, to mount this onto my car rack. It's gonna reduce the weight. And for some car racks to sort of hang the bike on that top tube, this bike's gonna be a lot easier to deal with. It's got all kinds of mounting points. You can see a bottle cage uh, bosses right here on the top tube. It's not a perfect position. Part of me feels like maybe here or here would have been good, but then with the battery pack that gets a little bit crowded, I've seen some other companies put them down here, but then, you know, it's really inconvenient to try to reach way down there. And with the travel up here, y y this fender gets pretty close. So I feel like they did the best they could. I might actually take these off if I wasn't going to use them, just so you wouldn't get yourself snagged like your pants and stuff if you're standing over the bike. We've got some really great mounting points up here on the steer tube. And this is great because it's actually able to mount a front tray or kind of a basket up here and you don't have to try to attach it to the suspension which gets really bumpy and it's going to impact your steering so this is a really nice setup and it comes standard with a rear rack so you can see this thing here it's actually removable we've got four mounting points it comes with this triple bungee which is very nice you don't have to use this you could use your own bungee adapter but this is pretty nice it looks really clean uh, pannier hanger right here on the side. So if you mount like a trunk bag on top, you can still put panniers. They're not gonna collide and stuff. You could maybe put one of those Yep child seats on this that clamp from the side, the next Maxi. And then we've got that that light in the rear. It just shut off because after a while, the display automatically powers down to save battery. But this is really well protected too from collisions from the side, the back, the top. I feel like this is a, a great design. 25 kilograms, it's roughly 55 pounds. So it's just very capable. And then adding to that, we've got these custom plastic fenders here that give you pretty good coverage. They haven't been making a whole lot of noise. They're not gonna bend or rust the way that aluminum alloy or steel could. If you scratch the steel one, sometimes they start to rust. They only come in this one color, of course, black. Uh, up front, the, the fender is... It's, it's okay, but you can see how it's mounted to the lowers of the suspension. It's not bolted directly to it. It's got this cuff thing, which can slide around a little bit. They're doing pretty well, but I just wanna be thorough and give you some feedback. Also, you might notice that if I let go of this handle, it's, it's doing okay right now, but back when I was at home, see, it was kind of doing this. It was tipping to the side. Um, and I've seen some other like cargo bikes and stuff, they'll have a spring from here to here, and that's sort of a stabilizer spring, and it keeps the front wheel sort of pointed straight. When you have that much weight, you know, we've got these, these wider rims, double wall, we've got this big heavy tire, we've got this suspension fork. So if you look at like the geometry on this with the angle, the, the, the wheel just kind of wants to turn a little bit is what I've noticed. Not a huge deal, but just worth pointing out, the suspension fork is actually pretty nice on this. They've taken off all the branding, it's just black out which is really cool and it's got a clicker over here so this is like 
compression lockout. So you can kind of lock the bike out if you're on smooth terrain. You're already gonna get some vibration dampening and shock absorption from these tires. You lock that out, you reduce the bobbing and that floaty feeling, bouncy feeling. But for me, I tend to like to leave it open so that I can go off road a little bit or go off a curb and save my wrists. Over here we have preload adjust, so you can preload that spring if you're someone who weighs a bit more, or loosen it up if you're like me. I weigh just like 135 pounds, so this bike, I mean, you know, 73 pound bike, it's like, it actually, it's kind of neat. It, it has this, this feeling of like momentum, almost more like a motorcycle where the bike takes the edge off of rougher terrain, and it feels really comfortable, and again, it's almost kind of go anywhere platform big double leg kickstand down here. I have some complaints about this. It's gonna add some weight. It actually adds like a strike point down here. So if you're pedaling along and you go over a curb or stairs or whatever, it just hangs down a little bit lower, even lower than that chain ring, which does have a guard on the other side. And so, you know, you're somewhat protected here. You can see some wires and stuff at the bottom bracket. But the, the real complaint I have, aside from the strike point, is that the chain, frequently touches the kickstand and it chips the paint off and it makes noise. The other thing, we've got this nice guard, chainring guard, but you know, it's not a full guide. Um, this isn't narrow wide tooth pattern, 52 teeth on this, by the way. It's just a st standard steel chain ring. So if you're out and about and you've got pants on like I do, there is a chance that you can get those a little bit messy touching that chain occasionally, and the chain could hop off. The drivetrain is is kind of basic on this bike. There's no slap guard down here, which was kind of surprised me because, you know, again, we can see how the kickstand, um, the paint's been kind of chipped off over time. In the back, we have 14 to 28 tooth free wheel, so it's maybe not as strong, as sturdy as a cassette, and the spread is, is fairly limited. It's 14 to 28. It'd be nice if this was like 11 to 36, or you know, 11 to 42 or something. We just have more options for starting and going slowly and climbing, and then also for going higher speeds. Considering that this is a class three speed pedelec, I was surprised that the drivetrain and, and the, the freewheel, it's just, it's just kind of basic Shimano Altus. Again, it's like one step up from the base level and Shimano group said it's just not as light or as tight as something a little bit nicer. That 12 magnet cadence sensor is going to respond. I'm gonna do some pedaling here in the highest level of assist so you can see how this thing, how this thing goes and also how it sounds. This is the high power, okay? <laughs> here we go. Pretty good, it's pretty responsive. This is 135 millimeter hub spacing with nine millimeter quick release skewer versus like, you know, a 15 millimeter through axle or something like that. And then I think back here, it's like 175 millimeter. This is a threaded 12 millimeter axle with nuts. And I was looking at this, I didn't see like a big torque arm or anything, right? It does have a torque washer right here, but the frame is aluminum alloy, and this is a very powerful motor. So 750 to like a thousand watt peak planetary geared hub motor from Bafang, fat bike specific, a little bit wider. You can see the 12 gauge spokes. It's, it's a good build, but just in terms of like mating it to the frame, it'd be nice if there was like a torque arm or something just to handle that extra power. I, I don't have an official Newton meter torque rating from the manufacturer. I looked all, all over their website. I studied this as best I could before doing the review. And again, I think it, it checks those boxes, but it, it's kind of a light off-road experience. It's, it's, it's not something that I really go crazy with mountain biking. Some of the other little call outs while we're back here, just 170 millimeter standard length crank arms, name brand Welgo aluminum alloy pedals with those fixed pins. I like these, these are nice. Um, and then 30.4 millimeter seat post. This is just a standard rigid post, 300 millimeters long. You could replace this with a suspension post and give yourself a full suspension feel. It would pair nicely with that suspension fork, especially if you're going somewhere that has um, kind of washboard or it's just, you go in a little bit faster. Cause one of the unique qualities of this bike and the Nomad is that they, 
are kind of these like class three speed pedal X. They go a little bit faster. I think up to 28 miles per hour is what they say. So in pedal assist mode, you can go faster, maybe get to work a little bit easier and stuff. But because it's class three, you might be limited on which trails you can ride and stuff. So a lot of electric mountain bikes don't have a throttle, which this is, it's kind of a class two as well, because it has the throttle and they, they're limited to 20 miles per hour. So a lot of people might, might really like that. And for me personally, given that the bike is heavy, it's really nice to have that throttle to get started. And let's say you're in sand or something, being able to twist that and have the motor help you get going versus having to stand up and really pedal and balance and try to get the motor activated. It's a really good setup and I think I'd have a lot of fun. I, I wish I had some sand to demo it for you. We don't have snow yet, but I wanna point out down here, this is using a 12 magnet sealed cadence sensor and then you can see the wires and the bundling going on here's where the internal routing starts we do have a lot of cables up front just because both brake levers have motor inhibitors which activate the rear light as like a blinker which is kind of cool and we have the display and we've got the twist throttle we've got the button pad so it's just it's kind of a lot and i think they're doing the best they can i like all of those features but it does create a little bit of an aesthetic you know compromise the other thing that's cool about this bike is that it comes in four frame colors. And so we're looking at this tan sand color, but they have black, which everything would sort of disappear. Like the, the batteries, black, the fenders, everything, and, and even the fork, it would just, it, I think that would look pretty nice, but you wouldn't get that same like visual footprint for riding at night and stuff. But we do have those reflective tires. They also have like a desert camo and then like an urban camo, almost looks like a snow camo or something. I have not seen that one in person. Really cool to have those different colors. Again, one frame size, but four colors and then some adjustability. If, if you're someone who wants a little bit more upright ride, you, you can get a shorter stem and it can have it a little bit steeper and angled. And while we're up here, this is the shifter. So it's it's really big SIS index shifter. It's kind of a entry level part in my opinion, but a lot of companies use it because they've got the twist throttle and you can see the housing for that protrudes a bit. And so triggers, they just don't fit. So they use this bigger one. It requires a little bit more reaching and, and movement and almost effort, but it's a decent one if you're wearing gloves because these are so separate. They're not not like these tiny little triggers down here. So that's going over there. We've got this bell to keep people aware of you, friendly signal. And then we've got hydraulic disc brakes. So these are branded Logan. They've got three finger, you know, two or three finger levers. Do have adjustable reach. There's a little set screw in there so you can bring them in or put them out depending on your hand size. Very nice. They do have the motor inhibitors that I mentioned earlier. And then if we look down here, dual piston calipers, 180 millimeter rotors, front and rear, which is exactly what I'd like to see on a bike like this that weighs a bit more and it's got those bigger wheels. Even though these are 26, when you put a four inch tire on it, you know, you end up with a pretty tall and, and just a, a heavier wheel. Might as well show you that rear brake light real quick. So press the power button here on the display, comes to life pretty quickly. You can see all the readouts for just a second. And then if we hold the up button, there we go. And I love how the display dims uh, for just a second when you when you change to lights, because I think it's assuming that you're riding at night and you don't want to blind yourself with the display. You want to be able to see what's going on. And then this is the blinking mode, which is kind of unique. A lot of times rear lights will just go bright when you pull the brakes if they have brake light activation. This is the first time I've seen blinking. And I suppose that just, it helps to create like a little bit of a, hey, I'm here, don't hit me, uh, feedback for drivers. I wanted to talk about the battery and the semi-integrated design these guys have. It works pretty well. This is so the Ranch and Dorado battery. But since this is actually the high capacity 19.2, two amp hour, it sort of spills out the side. It's not quite as symmetrical as the lower capacity 17.5 amp hour pack. That one weighs about nine and a half pounds. This one's like 10.7 pounds. It's pretty heavy. I like that it has a USB port built on so you can, you know, run your portable electronics maybe back at the campsite or inside. It is a good idea to keep this in a cool, dry environment and try to keep it from getting all the way down to zero and staying there. That's sort of hard on it. I like that Magnum has a pretty good charge here. This is 2.8 amps, weighs about a pound and a half. It's got a removable wall plug side so you can make it a little bit more compact if you're storing it in a backpack or pannier bags. Uh, these are the keys for the battery. You can see it says re -engine. So I'm just going to put this on the bike 
and then talk about the design a little bit more. Again, 48 volt, 19.2 amp hours. This is really high capacity and they're using Panasonic cells. Very nice. You can see the port that connects right there. And we just push that into place. I like that you don't have to put the key in and twist it or anything. You can do it with one hand like I just did. And that's nice given that it's fairly heavy. I also like that it mounts from the top versus some of the fully integrated batteries come from the bottom. And it's just challenging to do when you've got big fenders and a fat tire like this. But again, you can see how the battery pack kind of spills out a little bit. It sticks out from the frame on the left side there and not on the right. If you get the sort of standard battery pack, 17.5 amp hours, it's gonna be perfectly in line with the frame. So it'd be a little bit more balanced. It wouldn't stick out on the left like we see there. Also, I've kind of mentioned this before, but the charging port is down here by the crank arm. And you know, it's kind of neat that the cranks can spin even with the kickstand deployed like this. But what that means is you're a little bit vulnerable. If you've got the charger plugged in right here and the cranks get kicked, it could bump and kind of, you know, break that barrel adapter. And here are the keys. You can see that they're wrench and branded. If we want to unlock it, it's nice that the locking port is up high. The USB port is up high, but it'd be nice if we had a USB port up here on the display itself, because you're actually trying to charge something while you ride. This is just a little bit vulnerable. I mean, your leg, your knee is passing by. So it's kind of a, eh, you know, nice that it has it, but I'm, I'm not sure if I would actually use it while riding, which is too bad because it is such a high capacity battery. It's nice to tap into that if you're using maybe your phone, smartphone for GPS or anything. This doesn't have Bluetooth. There are no apps or anything that you can use with it. So it's, it's really just powering that really powerful motor and then those integrated lights. And these batteries should be more affordable to replace because the controller unit is separate. It looks like this has an aluminum alloy housing. It separates the two, so each individual part is a little bit more affordable to replace. And then it, it dissipates heat more efficiently because it's not like all combined into one pack. Most of the connectors and stuff on this bike are, they're kind of the press fit, but they're color coded. It's a, a little bit easier to do a replacement or upgrade if you need to. If one of the parts fail, you can see the wires and stuff are kind of exposed there. And then at the bottom back it right here, pretty well protected by that chain ring guard, aluminum alloy, but still just a little bit exposed. That's just kind of how it works. We've talked about weight a little bit before, you know, 73 pounds. It is a heavy bike. And one of the area where they could have maybe reduced the weight is to have punched out rims. And I think that would also give you a little bit more like kind of a comfort or shock absorption. Um, but again, maybe this was just a price point thing. I think that the price $25.99 is, is fairly good. And then, you know, $26.99 if you get the, the upgraded battery pack here. I do really appreciate how bright that headlight is. You know, it's, it's aimable, which is great. It's mounted to the arch on the suspension, so it can bounce up and down a little bit more versus if you mounted it up here on the handlebar, but you can see it's already kind of busy up here. And then if you have that, that rack, you might have to take the light and mount it to the bottom of the rack, and then it's probably not gonna point where you steer. So there are always trade-offs. Feels like it has an aluminum housing. Might be plastic, but it does feel, it does feel pretty sturdy. It's bright, like I was saying, but it doesn't have side cutouts. So again, really nice that we have the reflective tires, just so you can be seen from multiple angles and that that rear light, despite being protected by the frame, it's got these light pipes inside and they're fairly visible from the side. It's not being blocked by the frame. Okay, let's power this thing up. I noticed that if you haven't used the battery for a while, it sort of goes into a sleep mode, presumably to protect those cells so it doesn't discharge and, and damage the, the chemistry. So you might have to press this power button on top just to get it to kind of respond. And then up here, we have our little button pad. At the bottom is a power button. We hold that for a couple seconds. And if you wanna get into the options menu, see how the battery's blinking? You have to hold M like during the time it's blinking. It took me a while to figure that out. And then you've got a bunch of different menus. So there's units, we can change that from, you know, miles to kilometers, different settings. I think there's like a speed setting in here and then backlight brightness. And then it, it kind of circles around. I think if we just hold, yeah, hold the M button again and we're, and we're back. These are the standard readouts here. Hopefully you can see this all right. I'll try to block with my shadow. Five bars on that battery infographic. 20% increments, it's, it leaves something to be desired, but it's kind of standard, you sort of get used to that. Um, oh, by the way, I, I like how big this thing is. It's grayscale, it's pretty easy to read, it's backlit. And and yeah, I, I guess I just, 
you know, sometimes I'm like way up here squinting. It feels like all the main readouts are also fairly large. So I want to compliment that. We've got these uh, five levels of assist. So you can kind of turn it off in which case the throttle doesn't work or anything. And we go up to eco tour sport turbo or boost. And of course the higher you go, the more zippy it's gonna feel, but you're also gonna drain the battery a little bit faster. And the neat thing is that regardless of the level of assist, now the throttle works with full power. So it's just great. You can override pedal assist. A lot of times I'll be I'll be going around in like tour or something trying to save my battery, but I'll need a little boost to catch up to a friend or maybe I'm, I slowed down and I'm in sand and I need, I need that help to kind of keep myself stable. The throttle is gonna be active very easily. In the middle, we have your current speed. It's in miles per hour right now. And then we have like a watt meter on the right. So it shows how hard the motor is working. Maybe I can just do that. Yeah, see it, it blinked on for just a second. The motor's really not having to work very hard because it's just floating, not pushing on anything. Down here we have trip distance, time, and if we press the M button, we get a couple of other different readouts. So like odometer, trip time, max speed, and let's see, average speed, trip, trip time, and then current speed. So there's like, you know, three different views. If you hold the down arrow, you'll get walk mode, which is very handy especially if you're all loaded up with cargo and maybe you're trying to limp up a hill or something, you got yourself going on an adventure and you just need to get back to the trail. If we hold the up button, that's how we did the lights before. And there we can see it again, a little light icon and the display, um, it dims when the lights are enabled and then it goes bright again when you turn them off. So, so that's it. Yeah, it's a really, really simple and I think very intuitive setup. Everything's performing as I'd expect. There we go, we'll stow the kickstand. And let's take it all the way up to boost so you can see how quickly this responds and how loud that motor gets. Now, I should have been in a lower gear to get that to respond quicker. So I'm gonna shift gears over here. There we go, get a faster cadence. Let's try that one more time. Pretty responsive. I mean, it is a cadence sensor, so it's more about detecting motion than how hard I'm pedaling. And again, for someone who's in sort of soft terrain or you're getting ready to climb a hill, you might need that power more quickly and that's where the throttle's gonna come in handy. So let's just use that. Just twist it, and take right off. Very nice. And because of the fat tires on this thing, it's very stable, pretty easy to do, no hands riding. And I, I do this test just to kind of illustrate, you know, what's the geometry on this? It's not like really twitchy, we got the, the bigger tire and bigger wheel, it's got some good momentum to it. Yeah, it just feels, it feels awesome. I'm just kind of like floating on this gravel terrain. You don't really feel any vibration. Five nine, and I could probably raise the seat a little bit, but I'm feeling pretty good on this. I'm not having to lean too far forward because this is sort of a low rise handlebar. The grips are feeling comfortable. It's a good ride. Thanks for your help, man. Come this way? Yeah, I'll turn around. Okay. And you can just, thank you so much. No No worries. Have a great day. All right, see you. Good job. <laughs> that was nice. Got the third person view there for a second. A stranger walking his dogs. Very well behaved.
Well guys, I think that's about it. That is the Magnum Scout. Back at the side, I have a cool comparison tool so you could look at like the Nomad versus the Scout and, and other fat bikes and stuff. One of the cool things about Magnum as a company is that they work with dealers all across North America. So you can go in, you can like try this thing for yourself. Before you get it, maybe you get yourself an upgrade suspension seat post. And then you've got some post-purchase support, which is always nice. I borrowed this one from Caps Electric Bikes, which is in Port Moody and New West here in British Columbia. I really appreciate that. But if you don't live near a dealer, Magnum does sell direct and they sell it like 70% assembled. So the front wheel might be off and the handlebar might be swiveled like this so it fits in the box. And you've got a little bit more you know, effort you've got to put in, some recycling. But it's nice that you could get this to places that they just might not have a bike shop and still get a pretty decent price. Um, also back at electricbikereview.com, I have some forums and I set those up so you could talk to people about, you know, accessories or maybe their experience with Magnum. These guys have been around since 2010. So it's like 10, 11 year old company. They've been around for a long time. I feel like they do a good job and that's part of why I cover more of their bikes. Uh, because they've supported them for a long time and they have the batteries that are cross compatible and things like that. So I've measured this, all the specs and everything, I have those tools back at the site. I love you guys. I hope you have fun out there, ride safe, and we'll see you next time.